That was the legendary Larry Carlton playing the incredible solo on Kid Charlemagne off of the album Royal Scam by Steely Dan. Guys, what a solo. It's an incredible solo. And let me tell you all about how I played it. And guys, remember, if you like this content, please consider subscribing. Let's go back to our solo. So let me just tell you guys, it is incredibly hard to learn that solo. That took me, gosh, I started playing the solo in May and we're in the beginning of June. That was like my quarantine solo. I really wanted to get a solo down note for note and it was very, very difficult. I will not lie. Not that it was difficult in the way of like actual techniques, like I knew all the techniques I needed and I had the chops to play it up to speed, but it was the mind games, guys. The freaking mind games. You would not believe how many takes it took for me to nail that solo down for the recording. I thought I would do well. Like, I thought I nailed it in practice. And then I get to the camera and it's like, oh, crap. I just forgot everything. Guys, let me just tell you, learning a solo like that takes a lot of dedication, a lot of time. And even then, did not quite match up to the glory that is Larry Carlton. That man is an incredible player. And for a guy like Larry to play that solo in two takes, can you imagine how much knowledge he has? He's probably forgotten more about the guitar than I've ever remembered, and that's saying something. So why did I do this solo? Great question. So if you remember a while back, like a year ago, I think YouTubers go through like flavors of the week, and for a lot of certain YouTubers in the YouTube guitar world, they were doing this crazy, you know, Steely Dan, Kid Charlemagne solo. <laughs> Let me give you some cool tips and tricks on how I nail down a crazy solo, and I'll start off with the basics. First off, you have to find a great transcription of the solo. Now, if you guys are good, have good ears, you can make a good transcription yourself. But let me just tell you, I don't have a lot of time to transcribe solos note for note. So when I want to, when I went to learn Kid Charlemagne, I decided to find someone else who did. So I found a good transcription online, and I learned them note for note. And the next step I want to talk about is taking your time. See, once you have the transcription, it's easy to play the song up to speed just if you can't brute force it out. But let me just tell you, going slow was the key. Going slow. And when you go slow, rhythm is super important. You really want to make sure that the rhythms in the song all match up to the slower speed that you're playing it as. I can't tell you how many times I miscounted a bar or miscounted a pickup note going into a next bar or maybe a note tie, and it totally ruined the feel and ruined the rhythm for the rest of the song. So make sure that when you're slowing down the song, you nail down that rhythm. It is super important. And after you learn the rhythm to the song, it's just a matter of drilling it ad nauseum until you get through it. Going through that song, I felt like I was gonna explode. Some parts are really I was really good at, and other parts I was not. Like, in the beginning, Larry Carlton goes through some like very unique runs that are honestly pretty quick and in the higher registers of the neck. And it's pretty tough to get those down for the fingerings, but once you did, it became like home base. It was like, oh, I can do this. It made sense to go there. And some of the other parts were even harder than that. I mean, sometimes, when he had like alternating bass notes. Those things always trip me up. And the next point I want to talk about is you have to drill and woodshed the problem areas. And I'm talking about things like those long runs or those weird fingerings you just can't seem to understand or get a grasp around. Those things are gonna be the bane of your existence, and so you really wanna drill those areas a lot more than all the extra stuff in between. Some things will come to you naturally in a solo. Some things will come a little bit easier than most, but some of these areas will really twist your mind around. And then finally, practice, practice, practice. Play it up to tempo when you get there and keep playing it. And the real trick is, can you make this sound good with the pressures of on stage? I mean, I was just sitting down. It is way different when you're sitting down when you're standing up, I know. But can you imagine, like I like to imagine myself in an actual venue, sitting in the audience, and all of a sudden the guitar player for this song falls sick. Can I pick up the guitar and play that solo in the moment? 
Ugh, probably not, but it's a really great challenge to be able to say, hey, I have learned this a little back and forth, backwards and forwards and all this stuff in between, but can I play it in pressure in the moment? And that the way the camera and recording myself in that moment really messed with me psychologically was a really huge deal. What I mean by that is I may have practiced that solo a hundred times perfect in the practice studio or by myself or just noodling in front of the couch one day, but when you put the camera on me, gosh, I became suddenly aware of every single note that I was playing and it was very, very difficult to not just crumble into dust and think, oh my gosh, how am I ever going to play this correctly the first time? Let me just tell you, yesterday I played it for my Instagram and it was a whole lot worse than the take today, but I'm telling you, yesterday I must have went through that riff like 30 times trying to nail down every single note and I was not perfect let me tell you but if I take a break and I take a relaxing breather and I think about other things I come back to it all of a sudden those muscle memories are ingrained a little bit better I can play it better the take I made today only took about two tries it was really nice to be able to get out of my bed come down to my studio and play those things really really quickly and really accurately and I'm really proud of what I've done over the course of the last month so guys, all that's to say, go find a solo that will challenge you and learn a ton from it. I know I did. I really want to be a really great guitar player, and how can you be a great guitar player if you don't solo along with the greats out there? So find a solo player you really like or a guitar part that really challenges you and really dive into it. You'll learn a lot more about yourself playing guitar in front of a camera in the practice studio than you will just noodling around on your couch after your supper, okay? It's a whole lot different when you play those solos up to speed and you realize that all it took was a little bit of time and a little bit of dedication and you've got a talent, you've got a skill, you developed a motor pattern that you did not have before. And don't just drop the challenges, okay? Once you pick up a once you learn a challenge, pick one up again, okay? Keep trying to learn new and new and more awesome things that are going to test your limits as a guitar player and that's what will truly make you better. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, once again, please consider subscribing. I make videos all the time. You don't want to miss all the great content over at iGuitar. And of course, follow me on Instagram, at iGuitar. I'll answer your questions there. If you want to learn more about my personal life, what's going on with me, you can find me at Instagram. And of course, guys, go enjoy your day, go grab a solo, and go learn it. It might just change the way that you play the guitar.